It depends on where you are, Sheba. And I know there's been some conflicting reports. Some people saying, hey, you can take your glasses off for a little while. That's only if you're in the path of totality. If you're in the path where you will have a total eclipse for about two minutes, you can take your glasses off and look up and you won't be able to just see the corona or the ring around the sun and then see twilight all around you. Now, if you're in Atlanta, for example, where we have 97 percent totality, you definitely want to leave your glasses on the entire time that you're looking up at the sun. Okay, so if you're anywhere in a partial eclipse, you definitely want to leave your glasses on. I can't stress that enough. I do want to show you a timeline here of what we expect or, or when we're expecting this to eclipse to start to take place. If you take a look uh, here, beginning at about 105, that's when we're expecting things to start to take place. You'll start to see like a little chip there in the sun. And then the earth, I mean, the sun, the moon continues to move across. And then by the time we hit uh, 236, 235, 236, yeah, really that's when we'll hit our peak. So for example, in Atlanta, 97% eclipse will be taking place. Keep your shades on at that point. Unless you're up here near in Rayburn County, we're looking at 100%. Then you can take your shades off for a little while, then put them right back on. By the time we hit 401, that's when we'll see the sun reappear in its full disk and we'll start to heat it back up again. In fact, temperatures will begin to drop off just a little bit, expecting a small dip in those temperatures before it heats back up. Again, a once in a lifetime event that's going to be taking place is going to be really cool to look up at the sun, but you want to make sure that you're doing it safely, Sheba. Clear, Chesley, from 105 p.m. to 401 p.m. is when we should, anytime we want to look up at the sun during that time period, we should keep the glasses on. Absolutely, absolutely. And let me let me stress again, if you have a telescope, it doesn't mean that you're safe just because you have a telescope. Mm. That telescope should have a solar filter on it. In fact, I have a, a lens here uh, where it, what it should look like. I should have had this out already, but one here you go. Pockets. It should look like this right here. <laughs> it all, yeah, one of my pockets. It's, it almost looks like a lens cap, but it's actually a filter similar to what we have uh, as far as those shades go, that uh, Mylar uh, filter there. You should have one of these for your, your telescope, and it should go on the top lens, not on the bottom, but on the top in front of that mirror that's located within the uh, telescope itself. What about for our phones? For your phone, your phone should be okay. Your phone should be okay. The problem will be whether or not you have protection on your eyes while you're shooting ah, it. Okay? okay. But your phone should be okay because it's going to be far enough away. You're not really zooming in there. It should be far enough away that you can get some video, but you make sure you have your shades on looking at that. So perhaps set it up on a tripod first and then put your shades on to look at the sun and the moon. There you go. There you go.